Yes, 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 we are here, we are here, and we are recording. Yay! Hi everybody! Happy Wednesday! So, uh, it was requested that we do a nacho day, because everybody loves nachos. And um, so today I wanted to discuss the conversation of nachos and what you can do. Um, now, it may not be known to everybody, but quite often corn is a high GI product, um, and it's not necessarily, necessarily balanced. Um, but it also will be quite low on a lot of people's food profiles because of the way it's processed, the way it's grown. I could go on about corn in a million different ways, guys. So today making nachos, I'm going to do, yes, the typical nacho way. I'm going to quickly cook up the meat. We're going to quickly talk about all those things. But I also am going to show you guys a different variation using muffin tins and a pita bread. So you can use any version. You can find gluten-free, buckwheat, spelt, uh, rye. These ones are rye-based. Um, and I'm going to show you guys uh, a different way of serving them. I'm also going to show you guys a different way of having them at different meal times and different options. So very, very quickly though, so you're going to stay with me, bear with me as we um, get into creating today. I've got everything already grated. So I've got, um, I've got my mince, I've got my onion done up, I've got my um, garlic done up, I've got some celery, I've got some zucchini grated, carrot grated, chopped up um, cabbage. Uh, we've got our guacamole mixture as well as our beans to go in it. So we're going to go and do a little bit of a variation of a few different types. Any questions, pop them in. Um, but first off, what I'm going to do is show you guys how do I actually make these on the um, in the muffin tray. So all I'm doing is taking a pita bread, slicing it down the middle, folding it in half, and in my oiled, make sure it's oiled, in my oiled muffin tin, I'm just going to press, just going to press it into there. And let it fold. You will need to jimmy it with your fingers and just make sure it's caressed into co cohesion, coercion, into staying inside of its muffin tin because you want that shell to form. And then I'm going to pop that in the oven at 180 degrees just for a few minutes to harden up while we get on with our cooking of the meat. Now I am I am using meat today, but you can definitely do it vegetarian. I'm doing it meat because I know all the guys in at Vulcan are going to be wanting to taste it. And I know you guys do a lot of stuff with meat. So I thought I'd at least share a way that you could do this by adding extra vegetables in there and lots of flavor. So, like I said, uh, we're going to keep it quick and simple. I'm going to take three cloves of garlic. And what I'm doing is only taking half, uh, two thirds of that. We're going to leave one clove for our guacamole. Uh, and I'm going to pop that into my pan. I'm using grapeseed oil because grapeseed oil at the moment is the highest ranked for me still. By the way guys, I'm on day eight of the 10 day detox. So I've only got two more days and then I'm able to eat this. So my portion of this is gonna be put into the freezer. Yes. So in there goes my onion. I've chopped up leek instead of onion because leek is rated higher for me as a diplomat right now. And I know a lot of the guys in at Vulcan have got the same. So in goes my leek, which could be onion. In goes my celery. You could even do chopped fennel. Now, if you were doing this by itself without protein, such as meat, you could do this with chicken. You could do this with pork. You could do this with turkey. Um, you could definitely do this with lentils or mixed beans. I've grabbed one of the Mexican bean mixtures because at the moment, red kidney beans are really, really, really well rated for me when I'm not on a reset protocol. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to make it about me. It's either lentils or kidney beans right now. And I would do lots of lentils. So I thought I would do this one with kidney beans. But lentils are my next best friend, my next vote, my next choice. I'm going to turn the back camera down a little bit further. Okay, so that one's drying off beautifully. We want to get a little bit of colour across each of the uh, ingredients in there at the moment. I'm then going to take my mince. I'm only using 500 grams. You could use a kilo and just add more vegetables in there. The good thing about this is, and my sisters, my family, my family come from stocks of, um, you know, we were never really greatly well off. So we were always about doing the best we could with what we had. We were always about um, spreading things out. So our family would make a bolognese or a nachos um, and you know, you would use an entire mince, but then you'd use it for uh, a nachos mixture, a bolognese mixture, a shepherd's pie, uh, a lasagna, a spaghetti bol uh, a bolognese. Um, but I'm also going to show you guys a breakfast muffin tart. So that's coloured up. Oh, I wish you guys could smell it. Oh, can you guys see the garlic colouring in that? Yo, yum, yum, yum. Okay. In there, I'm going to throw in my mince. Take off the paper layer. I've known many people to do that. 
and forget it. Pop that one in. Just smush it with your frying pan. I've actually seen there's a couple of vegans on my TV show at the moment, so don't stress, guys. I only eat red meat twice a month because my genetics, and so everyone's entitled to all their beliefs and everything, but genetically, as a genetic profiler, I know that meat is actually quite highly rated for me. So I will choose when I'm not on a detox protocol to have it a couple of times a month at my lunch times. This depends, it's not the first thing I buy. I'll normally buy um, fish or lentils or things like that, but it's, it's up to you, it's your thing. So, let's get this mint cranky. I'm not gonna stir it too much, I'm more stabbing it. Stab it and let it create color. Once that creates a bit of color, I'm then going to um, stir it and add in my veggies very quickly, but I want to cook my meat out and try and cook some of the juices out of it because what I'm actually going to do is throw these vegetables in there and not cook them so much. Okay, I'm really just going to toss them together and then pop them on the chips. Um, I am using lactose-free cheese. Kelsey, I'm going to have to buy you another block of cheese. No, there's still plenty. I've just grated a little bit of cheese for decoration for those cheeseaholics. But um, the, uh, the guys at Vulcan Steel are going to be experiencing a lactose-free cheese for the first time, potentially. You know, that's what I'm all about, is giving you guys an opportunity to try new things. Into the seasoning, uh, into the mix, I'm going to throw in my nacho seasoning. I could show you guys how to make everything from scratch, but we are trying to do it on a budget, and I know some of you won't have all these ingredients at home. So look, they're cheap. Just buy some. Throw my seasoning in there. Give that a bit of a stir. It's really starting to get some colour now. How good does that look? Give that a stir through. If you're a Worcestershire lover um, and you're, you absolutely love your Worcestershire, I'm going to tell you right now, Worcestershire goes amazingly in nachos. No, it's not traditional. Yes, it is bastardizing the dish, but I am more than happy to bastardize dishes if it means that we're getting nutrition into the dish. I'll say it there. All right, into that. A couple more seconds. Don't forget your shell casings in the oven. I'll grab them out for you. Look at these. So you could grab those and just have them by themselves and serve them as cups. You could bake off like trays upon trays of these and then sit them at the kitchen table or sit them at the dinner table and serve these all up in separate proportions. Perfect, right? Perfect. But I'm going to let them sit because I've got a little bit more of a creative outlet than I'm using them for. Now, I'll throw in my beans, veggies in a second. In the meantime, let's grab our avocado. I've got two here, I'm going to see which one looks sexier. Yeah, that one's great. Take that, if you want to just assist yourself in slicing it just with, um, or sorry, dicing it in the shell. It makes life a little easier when you're trying to mix it outside of the shell. Don't cut your hands. It actually is, trust me, professional. I do still cut myself occasionally. But it's more about know where your hand is and you're just going to the skin roughly. Scooping out my avocado. Now, the other thing with guacamole is you can add all kinds of things. Yes, it's not a traditional guacamole. So if you want to keep it as a traditional guacamole, you go Glen Coco. If I'm offending your authoritarian, you go for it. You do it however you wish. If you just want lemon and garlic, that is your prerogative. I am having no judgment for you whatsoever. Into that, I'm going to throw my garlic, some lemon. Remember to roll your lemon, guys. You will get far more juice out of your lemon when you cut it. Don't squish it. Start squirting out. You've, done, you've gone too hard. Ease up, turbo. So give it a roll. Ease nice and sharpening. Give it a roll and squeezing it into your beautiful avocado getting any seeds i'm using my hand to catch any seeds right there i'm only going to use half of it now a little bit different you can oh got a phone call hold on whoops phone call um so into this what you could do is you could totally grate some ginger you could totally throw in some extra bits and pieces i am going to add in a little bit of chopped up radish because radishes are incredibly high for me right now and a lot of you 
Throw in some salt and some pepper, crushed up. Not too much, just enough. Now is a good time to throw in all of your vegetables. So I've got some grated zucchini, I've got some grated carrot, I've got some chopped up um, cabbage, red cabbage, because it just looks pretty and colourful. Uh, I've got some chopped up capsicum in there. Natalie at your Vulcan will be very happy to hear me not say pumpkin. Pumpkin is like her arch nemesis. Keep that a stir through. And I'm just going to let that cook a little bit more while we finish off our guacamole. Make sure it tastes beautiful. And give that a smush around. Stir that through. I like to leave it chunkier. If you want to smush it through more, use a fork or use a um, use a fork or a or a masher and go for it. See what that one tastes like. There we go. So I've left it kind of chunky. It's got a little bit more of a, a an added bit. You could chop through there some shallots. You could chop in there some chives. Anything you like. Use it as an opportunity to add more flavour. Priscilla, hey Priscilla, hello, hello Emma, hello Laura, hello Denise, hello Din Diana. Oh hey everybody. So guacamole is made. The mince just needs a bit of a stir through. Cook those veggies through. I've left that stir fry. It's only been a couple of minutes. Oh my gosh, me being on detox, this is like killing me. This smells divine, absolutely divine. What I am going to do though is because I am a diplomat and it is high, 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 highly ranked, I am going to use this opportunity to add a little bit more cumin. Cumin is one of the major ingredients in your dishes here, in your Mexican. So we're just going to add a bit more because at the moment it's so, so highly important for a lot of us to be having as much of our spices as possible. So that's done guys, look at that. It's still dry, the, ju the veggies haven't lost but extracted their juices into anything yet. So when we go to put it on our chips, they're not going to make it soggy. So what you would do from here is take my chippies, so I've got the corn chips for those people at Vulcan so they can try it with the corn chips. We're going to take a nice big spoon, oh spoon, I'm just going to slap it on there, slap it on top, yum. And then with this one, I'm going to spoon, let's pop this in the oven. There we go. Spoon's on top. You could add some um, nutritional yeast on this. If you were doing a vegan version, I would make a, a nut cheese, a vegan white sauce. Um, I would make it with nutritional yeast. I would be adding um, cashew cheese. I would be adding... Uh, all kinds of other things to this if this was vegan, but because it's not, we're just going to throw that one straight in the oven. Uh, then we're going to go to this one here. So these ones are like a breakfast idea. So yes, I said you could serve this on the table, have a bunch of these in a bowl and everyone gets a cup and they serve it from this from the table. It's a really cool eating idea of how to serve them out. But I'm going to give you guys a breakfast idea. So I'm going to take some of the mixture Throw it into the bottom of my cups. Now some of them I'm going to leave without an egg and just serve them up. And some of them, what I will do is actually get the egg. Egg. That just had my beans in it. No, no stress there. Egg and give it a bit of a mixture. I don't need to add any salt to that, guys, because the mixture has got enough salt in it. I'm going to pour the egg into a couple of these. This is an excellent <laughs> idea, guys. <laughs> Bit of egg in there. I'm going to bake those four, and I'm going to pour these two out and decorate them. Maybe you could chop a bit of fresh tomato on top just to make it all sexy and put it in the oven like that. Oh, play with it. I'm going to do a bit of cheese on top. Oh, look at this. 
Look at this. How good. These kids would love these. I mean, there's veggies hidden in there. There's meat hidden in there. There's cute little serving cups. These are like perfect for the whole family, guys. Ugh, without tipping the egg out. There you go. Yummy. Pop that in the oven for a couple of minutes. Melt down the cheese and you are done. With these ones here, all I'm going to do now is serve it up with the guacamole. If you want to add tomato salsa to this, like a, sorry, um, like a tomato, uh, yeah, just a tomato based salsa, you definitely could. But I'm going to sit, stay, stay flat. Nice little technical issue there. Adding in some chives, just stay, don't you? Are you too good for your cup? I'm going to throw on some thyme. Now, thyme is recommended really, really high for everybody at the moment. So, of course, I'm going to make thyme to add thyme to my nachos. And serve it up on the plate like this. I'll do a photo into the groups after this. How good do they look? Cute little serving cups. Quick and easy for the whole family. Easy to make. Easy to store. These little um, containers, these little containers, these little shells will last in an airtight container for a good couple of days. If you need to retoast them again, pop them back in the oven just to warm them and just make them a bit more crunchy again. And they're good to go. These are so easy and it's taking away the corn and having a grain that might be better. You could do this with lettuce cups as well, obviously. Now, you might notice I've got all of this left over. So I've just made six cups, six egg, uh, six cup servings. I've made an entire tray that would feed two to three people. I've still got all of this left. So what could I do with this? Guys, you could be making this with, um, at breakfast, you could add in a jar of tomato and make this as a spaghetti bolognese. You could add in, um, spaghetti bolognese, I shouldn't call it that, bastardized bolognese. Then you could add it for on uh, make a potato or sweet potato and pumpkin rosti on a Saturday and serve it on top like savory mince. Oh my gosh, with a poached egg on top that oozes out as you go to serve it. Yum. Then you could be adding um, a whole heap more vegetables. You could make a shepherd's pie out of this, a Mexican shepherd's pie. You could be making a Mexican lasagna. The, the list is limitless and we spent 15 or $18 on all the ingredients. I did have some of the stuff here at home already. But from that, you can see we've got four or five different ingredients, four or five different recipes we could make from that one base recipe with a Mexican flavor. So it's really about diversity. Just think outside the box, guys. There's so much you can create for a cheap amount. And you've got cherry tomatoes, you've got a zucchini floating around the bottom of your crispy, you've got a carrot that's wishing it could be used before it becomes a, a floppy mess. You've got probably some celery that's starting to get limp in the bottom of the crisper and some lemons that are going hard in the bowl. Use that stuff up. Create from what you've got. I would definitely bulk that out with more lentils for me. Like that, for me, that's a lot of protein. So I would add in like meat protein. So I would add in more lentils and more vegetables for myself. That's just how I roll with another tomato. Like, so I've got some organic canned tomatoes here, or I would prefer jar tomatoes, but you know, float with what you've got. No judgment. Now let's bring these out of the oven. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There we have a nacho. And then we serve the nacho with the guacamole. Oh, how good does that look, guys? I wish you could smell this. Then we get a little breakfast cups. Because they're looking all sexy and cute. They need a few more minutes. But, because the egg in that one just needs a bit longer. But, when this is done, guys, serve that with some guacamole on top. Breakfast nacho cups. Serve it on a bed of lettuce or a bed of spinach and you are hunky-dory. Uh, I'm going to turn my oven down and finish those off. So, can you see, guys, how you can be so creative with such a simple basis to start with? I hope I've inspired you. I'd love to see you guys do some creations. I'd love to see someone do a chicken version or a turkey version or a pork version. I'd love someone to create, you know, do this basis and show me how many different meals you can create from this base. I dare you. I double dare you. I challenge you because I love you and I care for you all. Stick with your budget. $15, $18, $20, probably $25 max to buy your mints and a couple of ingredients there. And get making. Use what you've got in the kitchen and create whatever you can. I bet you, you could probably provide yourself with four to six meals easily with that one 
base. It's all about the base. Oh, sorry, I'll stop that. Um, day eight of my detox, feeling good today. Yesterday was pretty horrendous. For those of you who are on a detox protocol, I commend you, fellow detoxers. Um, and knowing what thy body needs and when you need rest. So I posted a video of me doing fitness yesterday. I was, I had a nana nap at one because I was feeling so flat. And then I got up and had my lunch. And then there's a video of me doing deadlifts and push-ups because I've managed to find my energy balance. So know thyself, know thy flow, embrace your pace and just screw for the guys, just go with it. So I'm gonna create some photos of my creations pop them up into all the orifices of social media and hopefully have you all drooling and chomping at the bit to create some of these masterpieces yourself. I really hope that you do and that you share it guys because that's what it's all about is creation and sharing and knowing that there is a million of options and then some for cooking and creating. Love you guys. Mwah.